welcome welcome welcome today we're going to be watching a, a video here that's uh is the name of it is the world's largest underground network and this is in montreal canada and uh, i would like to thank darcy martin for uh, directing me to a place where i could watch more canadian videos and take you know what i mean thank you very much uh darcy martin for uh, suggesting that to me you know what i mean uh welcome welcome <laughs> i'm mr giant ting you know what i mean and uh, let's go ahead on youtube and uh sim simmer see what this underground city or underground network is all about in montreal well it's one of the less avoidable realities of this city that the winters are long and cold and often difficult but montrealers have an ingenious way of dealing with this a loosely connected network of tunnels and covered walkways collectively referred to as the underground city. The underground city, also known as Rezo, refers to an indoor interconnected network of commercial complexes, universities, venues, shopping centers, wow. and hotels within Montreal's downtown core. Basically, in winter, it's so damn cold here that uh, nobody wants to walk outside, so Montreal created this assortment of tunnels and stores and malls underground. <laughs> Wow, stores and malls. I wonder what it's like, you know, Christmas time under there, boy. You know, is it hustle and bustle? Comment down below, let me know, because I'd be interested in that. The idea of an underground city, I don't know, man. I don't like being underground very much, but I guess the way it's uh, it's built and the architecture and stuff, it wouldn't be uh, prevalent in your mind that you're underground, you know what I mean? Let's see what they're doing here. Let's see. Oh, they have weather problems too in Canada, but seem to be able to cope with it a little better than we do. If they don't like the weather, they don't go out in it. In downtown Montreal, they have a complex of buildings with the largest underground area in the world, where one can live in centrally heated splendor without ever seeing daylight. You name it, they've got it. Bueno, y ahora sí, he llegado al lugar que más he querido conocer de todo Montreal y es la ciudad subterránea. Esta metrópolis es conocida a lo largo del mundo por tener la mayor cantidad de pisos bajo tierra construidos. Eso está exactamente debajo de nosotros en este instante. ¿Qué les parece si comenzamos a descubrir? Entramos. Let's go find this themed underground city of Montreal. It was started in 1962, but obviously it wasn't finished in 1962 because this is pretty modern. So it's so big that if you add it all together, it's about 20 miles. Wow. People are estimated to use the city every day during winter time, making it a thriving shelter and working environment. There's literally a whole world of stores and just so you don't get lost, they put what streets you're connecting to, big intersection here. You really have to know what you're looking for. If you enter a random access point without any direction, you might be disappointed because everything is going to look like a huge mall. The joy is within the journey. On the top walls. Did we come in from there? The myth about Montreal is that there's a whole underground city. And a lot of the tourists that come here think it's something really exciting and that they're going to go in these tunnels and that it's super sci-fi. <laughs> The idea behind the underground metropolis is not new. It's merely to separate people from traffic. But how well the Canadians have gone about it. Aslında fikir babası Leonardo da Vinci'ymiş. Fíjense qué locura esto, eh? porque lo que estamos haciendo es ir conectando edificios y vamos caminando por la ciudad pero sin atravesar el, lo que sería el exterior. De este edificio vamos a ir a ese y después a ese y así vamos a ir caminando. Podemos conectar en total 35 kilómetros. Y en esta toma podemos apreciar perfectamente que estamos bajo tierra. Eso que les estoy señalando allá arriba es la entrada de la superficie, el Boulevard de Monsieur. Pero allá abajo está la entrada del metro. It's almost like a small town in here. And you can hop on subway is right here. Quitar la chaqueta porque ciertamente no se necesita aquí adentro. Hay una buena temperatura. We're, we're here. We made it to the Eaton Center. This is the Montreal Left Center. Do Eaton. Chops. Chop, chop, chop. Huge shop. There's like four stories. 
I'm going to act like a tourist now. I'm going to bucket list this. You know what I mean? A whole underground uh, uh, city. I know uh, Grand Central Station in New York is kind of sort of like that, but 20 miles long? I don't think it is 20 miles long. This is quite interesting, you know what I mean? Promenades Cathedral, located directly under Montreal's Anglican Christ Church oh. Cathedral. Es que los centros comerciales subterráneos se conectan bajo la tierra con otros. Vamos ahora al otro mall. Okay. Que está conecta con el Eaton Center que se llama Montreal Trust. Montreal Trust. Buralar aynı şekilde kendi mahallesinin etildiği için gerçekten insanlar bir ferahlık veriyor. İçeri giriyorsunuz, bir serinliyorsunuz. Kışın aynı şekilde. Place Montreal Trust is a five-story shopping mall. This section has I'm going to tell you straight up, I'm going to need a guide down there because I'm going to get lost, you know what I mean? Because you're on the ground and you don't have any concept of uh, where you are down there, you know what I mean? Even though there are signs and stuff, there are signs and stuff like that, I would still be confused, you know what I mean? Because I'm used to finding my way around above ground, you know what I mean? Landmarks would be easy to... Uh, to see and decipher, you know, down there is all shopping malls at 20 miles long. I'll probably get lost down there. Guys, it's done. Tina found that our store vacation's canceled. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Estamos en el piso cuatro bajo tierra. Sin duda alguna, alucinante, diferente, interesante. They also have a nursing room, indoor parking with valet, and offer free wireless internet on every floor. It feels like we have been walking for miles underground. Me encanta porque cuando tú cambias de un centro comercial a otro, ves las diferencias, inclusive hasta del diseño. Por ejemplo, me estaba llamando muchísimo la atención esta tienda que la decía claramente Simons. Es una tienda de departamento. That's a place that some locals will probably just not see the whole of, you know what I mean? They know where the store is, they know what entrance to take, what exit to take, you know, and, and, and a lot of us are creatures of habit, so then, you know, you wouldn't explore the whole thing, you know? It probably would take a whole day to just explore it. Explore it. But that's like walking 20 miles, that's like walking almost the length of my island right there. Este centro comercial se llama Les Cours Montroyal. Seguimos con mi mal francés y la particularidad es que pareciera como de lujo, ¿verdad? Un centro comercial que tiene una arquitectura bastante particular. Some people they have their apartment has access to underground. They don't have to go out in the winter. They can just go underground. They can get to their grocery store, to work, to the bank, everywhere they need to go, just underground. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it is. It's also a home to the Barbie Expo that has way too many Barbie dolls to count. A museum full of Barbie dolls, like I can't even do. Wow, there's so many. This is so cute. What? What? So this is, this is crazy. The place where all the festivals are during the summer. The Jazz Fest, the French Music Festival, the Just for Last Festival. Place des Arts, le plus gros centre artistique au Canada, avec ses six salles de spectacle, il y a plusieurs centaines de spectacles paradis. Behind me, this is the world of John Wick. It's a surprising setting for an action franchise, and again, everything about the film John Wick was a surprise. Yeah, 
Complex Desjardins is home to three office towers and over 100 shops and restaurants. You'll find over 200 events hosted here year round. Daha sonra dolaşırken yine buranın bir parçası olan Kongre Merkezi'nin içerisine geldik. Burası Montreal'in simgesi olan binalardan bir tanesi. Dış cebesi renkli renkli. Çok hoş bir mimarisi var. Among the cafes, restaurants and shops, you'll also see the famous lipstick forest. I really love how the convention centers attached to the mall so you have everything you could possibly need. That was pretty crazy for me to walk through that tunnel and see all the, all the different things and how people were able to get around. You like literally have a city underneath the city? Three, two, one, action. Security was nice, but I got kicked out. A couple times. We're just right here. I'm sorry, we were through and then we went left. Y'all know where we're going? Nah, I'm trying to figure out. I'm telling you. Now, there are many things that New York has taught us, but one of the main things is how to navigate, find our way. Why is everybody kind of cute? Check out this section of it. Kind of cool how much of this city connects underground. Holy sh. This is actually insane. Like it looks like a little but Completely encased in glass, we have an entire city block of 17 historic buildings dating from the 1840s to the 1960s. Wow. This is the World Trade Center, and right in the center, you will see this beautiful reflecting pool with the Greek goddess of the sea presiding over everything. Man. Whoa, a section of the Berlin Wall. When the Berlin Wall fell on November 9th, 1989, a newly free and united Berlin promised to deliver pieces of that wall around the world. So when Montreal was celebrating its 350th anniversary in 1992, they were thrilled to receive this piece of the wall as a gift. And here's what makes it even more curious. The main walkway runs along the Rue de Fortifications, Montreal's original wall around the city, built in 1717. We thought we walked through the whole mall and then we it, found like a whole other mall in the, the mall, mall that we were actually were supposed to go to. What we ended up doing is we just explored and we found spots that inspired us and we ended up having a lot of fun. We just wandered aimlessly. Who cares about that underground city? It's just a maze. That's what it should be called. You get lost at first because you don't know where you're going, but you don't do it. Just pick up the map. It's actually really cool. It's really fun. Honestamente creo que es una muy buena idea esto de la ciudad subterránea porque regresar a la realidad del frío canadiense es complicado. Year round, you can Hace cuánto que te viniste a Montreal? Hoy hace mudado, hace tres años y yendo y viniendo entre Buenos Aires unos cinco, te diría seis. Decidí mudarme a Montreal de manera permanente. Eh, muy contento, es una gran ciudad que espero que puedan venir a visitar. Está buenísimo, la verdad está. Yo les digo que me ha encantado conocer Montreal y que a ustedes también les haya encantado este video. Canadá es un país que se... Oh, I loved watching the video, my brother. That was really cool. Bucket list. Wow. I never really thought of visiting Montreal so much, you know, because, uh, you know, I know there's summer there, but the, the, the, the, the pictures of the cold and the snow and stuff like that wasn't very appealing. But this, this has piqued my interest for sure, you know what I mean? Hope you guys enjoyed this video with me. I'll leave a link in the description to this video, you know what I mean? So you can go check it out and thing. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys are enjoying your day, you know what I mean? I, I'm enjoying my day. I'm watching some cool videos and thing, you know what I mean? And, uh, y'all, drop a like on the video. Please comment be down below. Tell me about your experiences in that mall, if you have visited that mall, you know, that underground city and thing, what it's like. You know, so I kind of know what to expect when I do check it off the bucket list. Y'all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.